The video and any supplementary components are meant solely as a training resource. All the procedures shown here are in the process of being published by the Maleragen Resource Center. These are the items required for blood sample collection. Further details are in the written protocol. Next, these are the items required for column preparation. The product specifications are details in the written protocol. And these are the materials required for sample leukodepletion. Again, the product specifications are detailed in the written protocol. This is the equipment required for sample leukodepletion. Details are again in the written protocol. Collect whole blood in EDTA coated vacutainer tubes. Label them appropriately. Do not use heparin coated tubes as this will interfere with the later stages of sample processing. Mix the collected blood sample by gently inverting the tube several times and then store the sample in a refrigerator at 4 degrees Celsius. If a fridge isn't available, use ice packs to cool the sample until leukodepletion. Check the written protocol for further details on this procedure. Remove the plunger from the 10 ml syringe. Using this as a template, cut two discs of lens cleaning tissue. Place the two discs into the syringe using a rubber tip of a pencil. Lay these flat as a double layer at the bottom of the syringe barrel to prevent any powder leaking through the nozzle. Add one gram of cellulose powder, tapping the sides of the syringe frequently to release any trapped air. Alternatively, you could first weigh out the powder using a weighing board or a piece of clean paper and then pour it into the syringe. Tap the sides of the syringe a few times to release any trapped air. If the level of the powder is too high, tap the sides of the syringe barrel once more or use the plunger to gently push the powder down to the correct level. The top level of the cellulose powder should now be between the 6.5 and 7 ml mark on the syringe. Clean the outsides of the syringe with a clean dry tissue to remove any excess powder. If you wish to store the column for later use, label the column with the date of preparation. You can now store the column for up to two weeks in a sealed plastic bag containing a desiccant sachet. Label a sterile 50 ml centrifuge tube. Suspend the cellulose column over the uncapped centrifuge tube. Make sure that the lower tip of the column lies above the 20 ml marking on the tube. While removing the plunger from the syringe, do so in a gentle upward twisting motion to avoid disturbing any powder. Gently pipette 4 ml of PBS into the cellulose column, taking care not to disturb the top surface of the powder. Allow the PBS to flow through the column by gravity until no liquid is visible above the surface of the powder.
Pipette 2 ml of plasmodium infected blood onto the top of the powder, taking care not to disturb the top surface. Gently insert the plunger into the syringe barrel and slowly push down to the top surface of the powder. This will help the blood pass through the column. Carefully remove the plunger in a gentle upward twisting motion. Pipette another 4 ml of PBS onto the top of the powder, taking care not to disturb the surface. Gently insert the plunger and slowly push it down to the top surface of the powder to begin eluting the parasitized red blood cells out of the column. Repeat the wash through until the column is clean and there is no red coloration. Detach the cellulose column from the centrifuge tube and immerse it in the liquid disinfectant prior to disposal. For best results, immediately centrifuge the collection tube to pellet the parasitized erythrocytes. The written protocol contains guidance on calculating the settings for the centrifuge. If you do not have immediate access to a centrifuge, refer to the relevant appendix in the written protocol. Carefully remove and discard the supernatant with a pasture pipette. For best results, store the samples frozen until extraction. Refer to the written protocol for details on how to process samples without immediate access to refrigerators or freezers.